Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to have not one but two guests with us today. We've got Oscar Weston and Billy Gregory and they're here to talk to us about A11YTO and particularly the conference that they are organizing. So A11Y uh, is the neuronym for accessibility, just in case you didn't know. So a neuron, uh, neuron, uh, 11 letters between the A and the Y on accessibility. It's shorter. And then TO is for Toronto. So um, welcome, guys. We know there's a load of good stuff happening in Canada, but tell us a little bit more about what you're doing and, and also a bit about your backgrounds, because we know you've been working in the accessibility space for a long time but our audience might not, so fire away. Sounds good. Everyone is used to me. Uh, I'm sort of the hairy loudmouth that's been kicking around Twitter for long enough. So I'm gonna let Oscar talk a little about this conference because not enough people know about the, the awesome work that Oscar has been doing all these years. So I'm gonna let him start. That's perfect. Thanks, Billy. Um, my name's Oscar Weston. I work at TELUS Digital as the Senior Accessibility uh, Strategy Manager. Uh, driving all things accessibility throughout the digital side of TELUS, and that's exciting. Um, but with ALMYTO, we've had uh, we've been running that for about 11 years as a, a meetup group. Uh, we've done some um, multi-track conferences for about nine years, and those are kind of like camps, and they're they're kind of informal and a lot of fun and really great for the accessibility community. And then two years ago, we ran our first conference, like a full two-day conference, single track, uh, focused on learning about accessibility and uh, teaching people things um, that they can take away and bring back to their, their work, whether it's design or content or coding or testing, um, project management, the whole gamut. So this year, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna have another two-day single track conference on October 24th and 25th. Uh, in Toronto. Um, but on top of that, we're also going to have a conference on the Wednesday of that week, uh, which is uh, ALMY IRL. It's accessibility in real life. It's a built environment conference. It's more focused on uh, physical spaces, uh, which is new for us. We're, we're well versed in digital, but uh, this great stuff that's happening here uh, is uh, there's a good uh, audience for it in, in Toronto. People want to hear about that. So we're excited to do that. And then on the Saturday following the conference, we're running uh, a gaming accessibility conference. Um, and uh, so that's four full days of conferences, which are gonna be really amazing. And uh, it's all uh, captured under the hashtag um, A11Y week TO. So that's a great place to find out more information about that. Throughout and, that, we're yeah. also going to be yeah. doing, yeah, yeah. We're going to be doing social, uh, some other events as well that aren't specifically driven by us. Uh, uh, there's a company called Access to Success that helps uh, new startups that are trying to build products for people in, uh, with disabilities, so in that space. Um, so they've got a couple of events happening on the Sunday and the Monday. And uh, there's also going to be some TELUS hosted events uh, called, um, Days of Giving, and it, they're build events by uh, run by Neil Squires. They're, it's labeled Makers Making Change. And what they're going to be doing uh, for those two workshops in Toronto is actually building assistive uh, devices um, out of uh, printed plastic. So they're gonna have uh, people coming in. Uh, it, we'll share some links later so that you can definitely um, sign up if you're interested in Toronto but they're basically contributing back to the community in that space. And that's really an exciting event as well that we would like to promote and support. Um, other than that, there's gonna be a number of social events as well. Uh, Billy, do you wanna to talk to any of those? Uh, yeah, I can. So so a little bit of background on me. My name is Billy Gregory. I am the director of training at the Passiello Group. Uh, uh, that, that's my day job. My other 90 hours a week that I spend is on Accessibility Toronto and A11Y Week TO. Um, so uh, a little bit of context here. When, when Oscar and I started planning this with our partner, Chris Gollin, uh, our third core organizer, um, a little while ago, Oscar and I both had full heads of hair that had no gray in it whatsoever. Um, conference ran way too smoothly for, for a few years. So uh, one night I turned to Oscar and I said, hey, let's make our lives miserable uh, and, and let's add two more conferences to the week. Um, yeah, I'm kidding, of course, but uh, <laughs> we 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 threw ourselves into this and we decided that, that the conference is great. But Toronto is such an awesome community. 
Uh, and it's an awesome city. Um, we really wanted to bring people and make it an alternative to some of the other bigger conferences that are out there. Um, we wanted to make it affordable. Um, and we're really focused on community. It's a really um, social conference. So our speakers are always present. It's really easy to get FaceTime with people you're hoping to meet and chat with. Uh, the organizers are always out there shaking hands and, and, and making sure everyone's having a good time. I, I really do feel like we're one of the most accommodating conferences around. Uh, and, uh, you know, yeah. you can't beat our city in the fall. It's pretty. Um, it's three days after elections. So, you know, it should be just fine. Just fine. Um, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're not the U.S., so I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I appreciate that I am speaking to Americans and Brits on this call. Um, but yes. <laughs> What could but go let's wrong? not dive in. Oh, oh. Let's not go down that path. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about accessibility. That's one thing maybe we can fix. Um, we, we can try. So yeah, we we do we 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 have these conferences. But we realize that not everyone can get out during the week for conferences. So we wanted to build an entire week full of social events that would allow people who might not be able to come to the conference to come to the events, come out after work, socialize, meet our speakers. So we do have a couple of fun events. Uh, one is going to be hosted at Shopify. On Wednesday, October 23rd, tickets will be available shortly. We're not going to tell you what it is yet, but we will tell you that it's going to be very, 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 very fun. Um, and then on third, uh, sorry, on Friday, we have an event at Slack, which is going to be the return with the um, the fine folks who who originated this at CSUN. We are bringing back the tweet up um, with a, with a spin. So we are going to have. Um, an evening of social interactions, but the tweet up itself is going to be uh, an evening of lightning talks, only about four or five, and they're going to be plucked from topics that were discussed using the conference hashtag. So what we're going to do is we're going to monitor Twitter actively over the, over the course of the week, and whatever topics come up that generate the most amount of interest, we're going to assign either a new speaker or maybe one of the speakers from the conference, maybe someone new, maybe a special guest that you didn't even know was in Toronto for the event. Uh, and we're going to put them up there and they're going to speak for a few minutes and then we're going to let everyone sort of break out, mingle, talk about it, meet some people. And then we'll just do this a few times throughout the evening. That's going to be at Slack on the Friday night. Uh, that is the 25th of October. Again, 100 percent free. Uh, tickets will be available for that um, any second now. So that's our week. Um, it's busy. And then Saturday we have gaming and then Saturday night I'm going to crawl into a hole and sleep for a million years. Okay. Me too. No, n no, um, no cheeky references to Rip Van Winkle or anything like that. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm, I'm obviously excited about your lineup. I think it's fantastic, um, and more excited about the other people that are participating than my. I'm pleased to be with you guys. Anyway, you know. So, um, but I'm also. So uh, you've got an amazing bunch of speakers, uh, particularly interested in some of the you know, the gaming accessibility stuff. You've got yeah. Cherry, who I've been following on Twitter forever, so it would be, uh, be great to stalk her around the conference. Um, so, um, and you know, the, you've got a whole bunch of people talking on a really diverse range of topics, so I, I think it's interesting for me to see the 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 great diversity that you're you're trying to get into into your conference and it's not just all web accessibility um i know deborah's got a comment um so deborah do you want to well chip in? just following your line you, you may you actually made me think mm. of it and i am glad you know that you you're going to be one of the speakers but it is exciting to see what you're doing because it feels sometimes like the conferences, the accessibility conferences that I attend or I hear about, they, they seem to be talking about the same thing over and over again. And I understand that uh, we always need to go to Accessibility 101. But I like the robustness of the conversation and how you're pulling the international audience into it. And it's I think sometimes it's problematic when the accessibility conversations are only happening in one place. And we, we need to continue to be very aggressive to make sure that they're happening in different places. So I love what you're pulling together and all the moving parts because even though if the accessibility field some people might consider still small, we there's we have so much to accomplish and there's so many moving parts. And so I was just 
curious if you, the Oscar and Billy, if y'all might want to explore a little bit about why you thought it was necessary, because I agree with you, by the way, but why do you think it was necessary to sort of expand this and bring in these other topics? And why do you think it's important to pull the people that are trying to focus on inclusive design and accessibility all together to have these conversations? Well, that's a really good question. And I think um, uh, for me, uh, a and YTO has always been about uh, the community that we build around us and the community that grows out of a meetup and then the unconference, the camp, um, that's, that's kind of your one-on-one uh, uh, targets. And that's great. And you get uh, people who are new to accessibility to learn from that space and, and then learn more and more and more. And the reason we started with the conference was so that we could provide people with that because you're right, accessibility is still somewhat small, but it's growing. And we want to get people to learn more than 101. We want them to understand the bigger pictures. And while we're all, you know, really good at working in digital and we're really doing our best to try to make uh, the web a place that's good for everybody, it is obviously beyond that. So by bringing in game and by bringing in um, uh, the in real life built uh, environment, you are forcing people who think in terms of digital to think outside of that space and realize, hang on, the this is impacting uh, a lot of other people that that people uh, a lot of other um, spaces that people have to be in, whether gaming or or in real life. It adds a bit more of a human component to just web, and I think that's uh, uh, that's one of the main reasons why we decided to to expand it and make it bigger. Yeah, I, I think I think with us it was. Um... It was almost the Spider-Man principle, where where we 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 started this little meetup to talk about the web and design, and then realized that so many people wanted us to talk about more, and we had this really diverse group of attendees that we wanted to cater to, and we knew that they all didn't care about digital. And then for us, I think, and and me personally, I don't want to speak for Oscar here, but it was a sign of my own sort of personal growth that you know I started in digital web, but then I met a lot of friends, and I, I became aware of, of some of the challenges that they face, and 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 how you know, they don't actually just live on the internet. They're, they're real people in real life doing real things and they have real hobbies. And, you know, these are, these are people that, are, that I care very much about. These are dearest friends, you know, my, my partner, um, you know, all of these people, uh, you know, they, they, they all face different challenges. So for me, it, it was, it was a necessary growth for us. Um, we're, we're not just a digital community. Uh, it, it's so much more. Excellent. And and um, I just want to uh, point out that I mispronounced Terry. So it's a they, not a she. And so, sorry, Terry, uh, I'll get it right next time. Uh, Deborah, over to you. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to just follow along because I, uh, I recently went to Shanghai and I was um, at, to, at a Huawei event, an American at a Huawei event. And, and something happened at the conference that um, surprised me because I thought I was gonna go over there and talk to them about Disability Inclusion 101, Accessibility 101. And um, I had a lot of actually, actually unconscious bias, which I didn't even realize I had. And so I went over there, I was talking to multiple developers over there because I saw what they were doing with inclusive design and innovation and tech for good, which is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in, I don't care who you are, but I just want you to be making a difference in the world and I want you including people with disabilities. So, um, and so as I was talking to them, I was trying to get them to explain to me about accessibility. I, I was talking to them about trying to figure out what they'd done with accessibility in a real short conversation. And a couple of the gentlemen that I was talking to, they were speaking English, but one of them's English wasn't as good, you know, as their Chinese. And, you know, we were in China, but I don't speak Chinese. And and there was there was confusion and I was getting I was sort of confused about the confusion and it turned out that they when we when we finally got on the same page they said well but why would anyone leave people out of their designs and they were very puzzled I know they were puzzled they were like but we don't understand why why would anyone do that <laughs> I thought well, I, yeah. I I don't know. I've always wondered that same thing. So it's there are some very very interesting conversations happening, and I I do know accessibility is happening, but people aren't necessarily using that word 
And mm -hmm. I, I think that there seems to be some trends happening that some countries are not keeping up with. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really that right there. It, it really, um, I've been thinking so much about that conversation and wondering what else I missed almost. And so I, I think that's why I, w I really applaud what you're doing and who you're bringing into the conversations because maybe accessibility is small or maybe it's really large and people are just not using A11Y or accessibility, but they're using mm -hmm. other terms, including digital inclusion and yeah, you know definitely. breaking down the barriers yeah. of digital divide and the SDGs and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, now I'm gonna be quiet and let you two talk and also let my colleagues <laughs> talk. <laughs> but I'd love uh, y'all to respond to that. No, I, I think that's that's a really fantastic comment. And I mean, how great would it be if we could have conversations about designing for everybody and never again in our lives mention the world accessibility. It's just assumed and part of it. I mean, that's nothing new. We've heard this in every accessibility talk ever. A really smart guy mentioned that some users experience thing a long time ago. Uh, I heard he was pretty handsome from Canada, but anyways. Um, at the time. Yeah, at the time, before conferences. Um, but, you know, I, you know, it would be great if we could have this conversation about designing for everybody and never, never again in our lives mention accessibility. Um, but you know that's not that we're not there yet. But we could be. I mean, our our goal for our week really, and I don't want to floor bond forever, but I did have a lot of coffee and it's early in the morning here. Um, but uh, our goal for for ALMYTO Conf, we're not just a conference. We are a week long event. We want to become like the South by Southwest of accessibility. We want to celebrate and create a festival around this where it's like. We can come together and just discuss it for the whole week. We've, Oscar and I have so many plans for next year that, you know, it might have to be a month long event if we get it the way we want. We're going to have overlapping events. We've got a lot of stuff going on this week. I, I tweeted something about um, uh, publishing and 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 some some books I was looking for around ableism and and some things that I personally want to learn more about and, and do better with. And uh, the response was tremendous. So now I'm thinking next year. Maybe we need to do something around publishing. Maybe we need to do like a book fair or a, a meet and greet author event or readings, something. But I can guarantee you that will be part of our, our, our program next year. Something around accessible media and literature and the voices of these people writing about it. Sounds, sounds absolutely fascinating. And I think the, the, the pieces around literature are, are uh, there's there's so many different angles there. You've got ex you know, you've got the ex access to you know, books and you know, the potential to go down the sort of Benetech route and looking at Marrakesh Treaty and all this kind of stuff. But then you've also got the literature around disability. You've got mm -hmm. the the you know, stuff around uh, formats and starting technical accessibility, Daisy and EPUB and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, the the art and uh, art and and stuff around disability and media and stuff like this. Because so, so so yeah, you could end up doing that some of the stuff a bit like you said, south by southwest. What's it going to be? North by northeast. We already well, we already have that in Toronto for music. Yeah. It, it's it's okay. its whole thing. But I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a name yeah. for it, and I I, I hope it doesn't have yeah. the word like access or one of those like because there's a lot of events that have that they, they fall back on the trope so let's give it a cool name and let's make it a fun event yeah. that people can come for the whole world enjoy our city enjoy our hospitality and and laugh at how oscar and i are walking around like zombies the entire week <laughs> yeah thanks so, uh, uh, so sometimes uh, uh, the price is a barrier for people to attend conferences uh, sometimes even the old culture uh, around the conference it becomes a barrier because people say, oh, this is not really for me. Uh, you know, um, I would like to go, but I don't really know where I fit. It's only experts and, and corporate specialists are, are in there, or only people who lead uh, organizations in accessibility are, are somehow uh, around the conference. So you guys are trying to open this to everyone. Can you give, uh, give me yeah. some details about uh, what you had in mind when you, you were setting up the conference? Well, the the I guess it's a it's a broad question, but uh, I think um, 
the conferences themselves, uh, the the different topics that happen in those conferences, uh, the the different price points for each conference um, allows uh, p uh, people, different people to attend, depending on what they are comfortable. Someone who may not uh, know about accessibility yet, but is really interested in gaming, uh, going to the gaming conference might be something that, oh, they open their eyes and they realize they think about accessibility, they learn more about that. Again, learn more about helping people. Uh, same with the IRL. Um, it's it's a different group of people who can come and attend that one. It might be a lot of uh, business professionals. And of course, the social events that surround the week are also opportunities for people to join the events that we're uh, promoting on behalf of some other teams that are running during that week uh, are other opportunities for people to who may not know exactly what they're committing to with a conference. A two day conference is a big commit, but they can try these little things and learn about that. And then, of course, we've got meetups uh, throughout the year, uh, which are always free for people to attend, where they can also start to join the community, talk to people in the industry, uh, talk to people with disabilities, talk to people who have that lived experience as well. So uh, that plus the camp, which is another free event, um, there's lots of space throughout the year uh, that we try to provide within in Toronto so that people can learn. Yeah, and just one quick point around our camp, um, Oscar. You know, he, he's mentioned it a couple of times, but our camp is probably the size of some people's conferences. Um, it, it's yeah. a one day free event that happens in the spring. We get about 350 people out to it and it's a five track all day accessible event. So, I mean, it, it's it's not just a, you know, it, it is pretty informal, it's loose, it's casual, it's, it's more conversational sure. based as opposed to training based, but it's definitely, a, a, it, it, it's its own event in itself. Oh yeah, 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 it's a great one. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I question about go on, Deborah. The, yeah, well, and this is a quick one. Um, the it, this gets expensive to do this. So I was just wondering <laughs> about do do you have sponsors? Are you seeking sponsors? Um, I, I was just curious about sponsors, and then I'll turn it back over to Neil. Mm, sure. Um, yeah, um, yeah. We, we do have sponsors. Yeah, uh, we, we're lucky enough, uh, having done this uh, for the eleven years that this has been together. We we've we've built. Uh, sponsors that uh, continue to support us. Uh, we find that um, since we've started the conference, there are new people, new sponsors that are interested in supporting us as well, and that's very good. Um, and uh, and obviously, we we take the sponsorship money and we funnel it all back into the events. The only reason we can run the conferences and these additional conferences is because of the fact that uh, the generosity of sponsors that we have, uh, sponsors from the future, allows us to continue to do this growth. So thank you for asking that question. Yeah, and yeah. It, so it sounds like also you you welcome new sponsors too. So if Definitely. any yeah. corporate sponsors or people are looking, oh, this is a, an opportunity for sponsorship. So Neil, I'll go over to you. Just want to make sure I said that. Yeah, uh, if I could uh, just add one one little yeah. point to that. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I it, just just to build off that. I mean, we it, the, the conference itself, um, I think we're one of the only, I mean, we're not the only, but we're one of the few accessibility conferences out there that actually um, for our main conference fund all of the travel costs for our speakers. Um, so we don't ask anybody to travel on their own dime. So yeah, sponsor money is incredibly important to us. We are a team of seven people in total that assume an incredible amount of risk and debt um, for, for an event. We don't take salaries out of this. This is 100% volunteer. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, if it wasn't for the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do these. For sure. Yeah. And and yep. you know, yep. I wouldn't be able to be there without your without your you know help and uh, the help of your sponsors. So yeah, I I can attest that it, it enables you to have that richer con uh, you know experience as, as a conference because you can attract people from all over the globe. Um, I think when you were talking before about the sort of mixture of, of different people and bringing the communities together, I went to the Global Disability uh, Congress in Argentina earlier this year, and that was a really interesting mix. Again, you had uh, various technical tracks, you had an exhibition, you had sporting exhibits, and then a massive party, and they had about 20,000 people through the doors. Um, yeah, so that um, you know, this was you know, you know, the disability community coming together. Um, you know, you had everything from sort of disability sport to technical stuff going on there, and it was it was run by their government, so it's not it's not 
people volunteering. But yeah. but I think it was interesting because of the mix that it brought together. So you had you had government officials from um, from you know not just from Argentina but from the whole sort of Latin America region. People from the UK coming over. Um, you know, then experts, and I was super interested because it was seeing stuff in Spanish language, and, and we live in the English language accessibility bubble quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, they know how to party, um, and, and that was that was great because we're actually bringing people together, and it was it was an it was as much a celebration as it was a a, 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 com, a, a, a you know a conference and, and congress. That's awesome. Yeah. So Toronto might be behind Argentina in terms of partying, but we can sure celebrate with the best of them. That's for sure. And that's what we want yeah. to do this week. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think that, uh, you know, Canada's doing, you know, a lot of stuff in, the, in, in accessibility, you know, and, and people need to know about the kind of commitments that not only uh, you know individuals and organisations in Canada making, but the government's making now. You've got legislation coming into place. You've got mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and it's uh, it's uh, you know it's pretty wide ranging the the approach that you're taking as well. So there's there's real ambition. Can you yes, can you tell us how it feels from from your point of view? Because I look from the outside, and I've you know I've been talking to you know people in Canada have been talking to you know, people in your, your government and they've got ambition but what does it feel like does it feel different uh, to a few years back in terms of where, where you are now yeah I, I'd say it does for sure um, even even in our meetups uh, you know we, we, we've seen that the people coming out know a lot more they're, they're a lot more tuned in to what accessibility means um, and, and, you know, I, I see this in Canada, but I also, I mean, I, I, my job with, with the Passiello Group is, is a trainer. I travel all over the world and I, I teach people. And I've seen over the past four or five years that, like, you used to talk about the 101 stuff and people would be like, they just glaze over. They wouldn't understand what you're talking about. Now it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, like, like give us the good stuff. Give us the good stuff. Like, so, like, it's great. It's amazing seeing this sort of shift. And I'm not, you know, it, obviously it's not everybody, but there's, there's, there's definitely a, a huge percentage of the people I'm talking to that, are, are more uh, in tune with, with what's going on in the industry and, and they, they know more about accessibility. So that's, that's, it, it's really promising, I think. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, and it's, again, it's a, it's a slow growth. So, I mean, there's huge changes in Canada with the Accessible Canada Act, definitely, but the, the adoption is slow, but it's, it's picking up faster than it used to. So it's definitely worth pointing that out. Uh, and Deborah's right. Deborah was sort of nudging me in uh, in our chat window. Uh, yes, we have one, um, saying, you know, but it's not just about Canada. Of course, it's not. Um, but but actually, we ought to be talking about uh, when when countries and nations are, are acting as exemplars. And I think that by passing this legislation and by having a sort of statement of intent, if you like, um, th that you can act as an ex exemplar. Um, but yes, yeah. So um, I, I, I think it's such a rich topic as well. We, we've we've started Access Chat almost five years ago now. We're, we're approaching our fifth anniversary, and, and didn't expect that we'd still be, you know, finding a rich vein of material um, like we have. But but we, you know, we we interview people every week. I mean, we've, we've missed. Two two weeks of video interviews in five years, and that was only because Christmas and New Year fell on a fell on the dates. So um, right. it's a lot of interviews. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's a really rich topic, and I think that that's something that's reflected in the way um, that that you know your conference is also you know going into all of these different areas because actually accessibility is this kind of horizontal thing that that sort of weaves through the thread of, of society. Mm -hmm. so, 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 yeah, so, Neil, go on, so, so what I expect from you, Neil, when you are in Toronto, is to find out some people for us to keep the agenda going on access oh, chat of course. to the rest well, of 2018 excellent. and 2019 because yeah. we know we know we do we we spend a lot of time on social media and social media is particularly important especially twitter for the work we do but we you know we often it's quite frequent to find out 
people that are doing an amazing job, but they don't really have time to spend on the social channels or that's yeah. something that they don't like to use. And that does yeah. mean that uh, people, and, and it's important that people know the work they're doing. You know, a few weeks ago, we have a, amazing, a guest doing some work with prisons in the UK, uh, and it was, you know, a fun, it was a, a fantastic interview. So, Neil, it's on you. Uh, no yeah. pressure. And, and I think that Deborah also lined me up as the sponsor, didn't she? Perfect. He was like, yeah, Great. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're looking for new sponsors. Neil, over to you. Yeah, brilliant. I'll just break <laughs> open the wallet and watch the you know, I, fly out. <laughs> I, I would love to see y'all record something from our conference next year. I would love to see a live access chat off the floor at one of our events. I think we can make that happen. Oh, that I think so. Good. That's great. That would be really yeah, fun. We oh, keep talking we, about we, having a conference, so we should join you. So, yeah, yeah we yeah, love that. And, come on, and I did want come to on over. That, uh, yeah, I, and I want to note that I agree with Neil. I think Canada is doing amazing things. I'm really, really appreciative. I just meant that the conference is not only about the topic of Canada accessibility. It's oh, sure, we're no. really looking at it more from a global. That's what I meant. Sorry. If, I yeah, want yes. to make sure I didn't confuse yeah, it. I, if anything, the, the conference, we, we tend to try to book away from just Canada because we, 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 we're hosted in Canada, but we're a global event. Um, we have speakers coming over. I mean, Makoto is our, our friend from Japan who hasn't missed a single event. He's been a part of almost of every event we've done now. And he's like one of our biggest supporters, but he, he flies over on his own time every year because he, he, he loves the event. Uh, we've got folks from the UK that made this a yearly stop for them now as well. It's just, it, it's, I, I, I'm overwhelmed and beyond grateful for the support we've gotten from the community for this event. Um, you know, it, it's the little baby that, that Oscar and I, you know, birthed a few years back and now it's grown into the, in, into something that's, you know, taking on a life of its own. And it's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thrilled by the response. Yeah. It, it's great to see not just speakers, but attendants, uh, from around the world. Uh, it, it's wonderful to see what we started to grow into a go-to event that keeps growing and growing. So uh, thank you for calling that out. And, and, and just, yeah, and just so like we go on, Deborah. It, it, it seems broad. It, I'm sorry, Neil, I, I, we keep stepping on each other, but it, it seems like the content is so much richer than what I'm seeing in other conferences. I'll, I'll tell you another conference I love, and this is where I met Billy in person for the first time, is I love the Funka conference. I love, mm -hmm. you know, what they do. But your conference, just the content sounds, seems so rich rich and and it's for everybody no matter where you are you just started come you're an expert yeah. guru you know all this come Show up. I, I like that and i think that is the future and um so neil i apologize i didn't mean to step on you right when no, you were talking no. to you. that's okay um so i was just really wanting to get a, a feel for the size of the the conference how many participants do you have during the during so, the week Oh, during the week. Wow. Um, that is TBD based on, on final ticket numbers, but we're, we're expecting, I mean, with all of the events rolled in probably thousands, um, but you know, not at one time. I think our conference room uh -huh. itself, we have, we have very, we have a limited seating for this. Like we're, we're in a small venue. Yeah. So we're, we cap at about 350, 400 tops. So get your tickets now. There's not very many left. I'm not saying that just to drive sales, but there really aren't very many tickets left for no. this event. Um, uh, so no, but with um, all the side yeah. events, yeah, it's it's more about how yeah. many with all, people yeah. can you touch. Yeah. yeah, um, I'll be careful how I say that. Uh, in in terms of the um, how many people do you know can you influence and engage and 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 really get infused about the the topic and the subject matter during yeah. during the week that you're doing the stuff. And I think that was, you know, going back to the Argentina thing, they didn't have twenty thousand people all at one time. They had a few thousand when they when they did the main concert and everything else, but during the course of that yeah. week, they had twenty thousand people through the doors. Yeah, Incredible. that's that's our goal. That's our goal. One day, um, we'll we'll just keep building this and growing this to as big as as the community will let us. Really, um, if the support's yeah. there, yeah. we'll just we'll just keep doing something more and something bigger every year. Excellent, and 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 I think you know the the thing is with all of this stuff is, you know, one. One person that, that that gets the fire in their belly, that gets the passion, tends to generate more because you, you know it's it's like those kind of 
you know, when when people really get it and get into it, we don't stop. We don't stop, do we? we we're, we're here. We're you know, 20 years later, no. older, bedraggled, bearded, uh, with it's, shiny foreheads. We're all here, still talking <laughs> about accessibility. <laughs> so, it, 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 it's fun. amazing, and I, I think finding this community is probably the biggest gift I've ever been given in my life. Like, oh, you know, yeah. development was great. Being a developer was great, but finding this. Uh, I joked on Twitter the other day about how my first talk ever was called how accessibility made me a better developer, but I want to do a follow-up talk one day that says how accessibility made me a better person. And I mean it because the friendships I've made, oh, yeah. the work I've done, uh, it's just the most enriching and, and the best thing I've ever done. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, definitely. I wholeheartedly agree. It's, it's work that gives you meaning to your, to your life. And that's why we yep. all work stupid hours and do voluntary projects yes. and, uh, and and all of this stuff because it's 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 fun, it's engaging. You're always getting. I mean, you also have the excuse to play with all of the uh, uh, new toys, yes, and and of course the opportunity to work a lot for free, Deborah. Yes, we all yeah. get the opportunity <laughs> to work for free. <laughs> so happy. They say, do, do what you love. Like. Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I believe that's the saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Still sounds like crap to me, but I love doing it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, so am I allowed to ask the question, who are you most excited uh, about having on your list of speakers or is that unfair? In the no, rules no, no, of fairness, we we'll disqualify you, Neil. How's that? Uh, That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, not, I'm, not. I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, Neil. I am, I'm excited about that. But of course, I'm yeah. excited about meeting a lot of people. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that wasn't angling for me, right? <laughs> I know <laughs> that. Of I, course I, not. Um, of course not. I, I have a, I have a few. I mean, it, it is it's unfair in the sense that I mean, Oscar and I we we had a role in picking all, almost all of the talks. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Throughout the week, us and obviously other people as well. It's not just Oscar and I sitting in a room deciding who you know who gets no, thumbs up, who gets no, thumbs that down. That would be impossible. Um, I do have I do have a list of people for various reasons. I am really looking forward to Tatiana um, because she touches on a lot of points that a lot of people shy away from that are very important. So I'm incredibly excited about her same with ej mason uh i'm looking forward to meeting them in person as well um geez who else uh bryce johnson is coming to our gaming con convention our, our conference and he is speaking about um he's gonna he's gonna basically tear the gaming community a new one about accessibility and i'm excited about that bryce and i have been friends for geez almost 30 years now um wow. i knew bryce back when we were both skinny and and had full heads of hair and everything else. Um, and, and we've got so much dirt on each other that we, we basically have to sign NDAs every time we're in the same room with alcohol. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it's great. Uh, I am really looking forward to that. Uh, and I mean, just, there's just so many people. I'm looking forward to Eric coming back because last year he got hurt and he couldn't um, present. So we're bringing him back this year and he's going to talk. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. Just the whole week is just fantastic. Definitely. And yeah. I, I know yeah. you, you're going to have Jamie on, on and Oscar. Yeah, you've got oh, your favorites yes. on this too. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. Definitely. I, I, definitely I, yeah. Inter excited about Jamie Knight, but the, there's a lot of people who I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Like I, I, they submitted, I, I've never heard of them before, but they submitted such great ideas. Those are the kind of the people that I want to speak with directly. It's like your talk sounded incredible. And uh, I want to learn more about you. So that that's kind of if I'm going to pick favorites, yeah. I'm going to pick the people that I've never met for sure. That's a great answer, and and uh, I think you know Jamie will give a great talk. I, um, I oh, yeah. Jamie, Jamie and I sort of keep bumping into each other at, at these things. So it's like um, I'm as happy to see Jamie over dinner as I am to see him speak. I'm really interested in the people I've never seen before because that's where you really learn. Yeah, and for sure, for sure. So, so, yeah. so and, and also, yeah, like you say, meeting the people that are your heroes yeah. from yeah. years on, on social media from around the world. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm super excited to, to meet, you know, um, meet up and, 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 and uh, swap ideas. And I, I love the fact that you've also got 
and we need to close in a minute and um, but you've also proposing the idea of come and meet the speakers which I think is which is great oh yeah yeah that's right yeah um, that, uh, that that's new this uh, year so yeah so we, 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 we we've had trouble in the past with with questions uh, you know sort of sidetracking the conference so we, we decided to create booths this year almost like comic-con where you can come up and meet the speakers and chat with them after the talks and and so that'll be during the breaks so it's a great chance to to sort of meet somebody without you know um, sidetracking the whole event yeah so. yeah and and it's also then you're kind of getting that face-to-face -face engagement as well right you have an opportunity to speak directly to them yeah. um, it, it it's uh it's going to be really fun and really interesting and we we've shared that with our speakers recently as you know uh neil um and the response back was fantastic um and but also the caveat in that is that you don't have to do that so if, for example if you didn't want to speak in, uh, answer questions in a booth uh, we're not expecting any speaker who is not comfortable to do that to do it, and uh, uh, I think also people, uh, our speakers responded well to that. That it's it's completely optional. It's it's up to you and your comfort level if you want to do it. Um, but so far, we're we're seeing feedback from our speakers that they they are looking forward to it. Excellent, fantastic. So yes, um, and if if they don't want to do it, we're locking them in a cage and giving them you know bread and water. Thank you. Right? How are you? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, finally, you know, it's been brilliant having you on. I'm really looking forward to actually seeing the conference. Um, need to thank the people that sustain us as well, our sponsors. So that is yes, of Barclays Access. You know, they're, they're forever supporting us. Um, Microlink also doing a great job in delivering accessibility, innovation reasonable adjustments and workplace adjustments for people all around the globe and who can forget my clear text because they make sure that our captions are of great quality so thank you guys thank you everyone um, and look forward to joining you on Twitter and please you know just one thing share us the link uh, so that we can point people to to your conference webpage certainly we will do that yeah. uh yeah, everything right now, if you go to a11yto.com, uh, you can link out to all the various conference. Our schedule will be up on there in a couple of days. You'll be able to see the whole week. So a11yto.com is where you want to go. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, everybody. Thank you.